Louisiana Beer Reviews, Brock. Don't know why they call it Brock. But I do know that it is from Poland, and it was sent to me by Douglas in Virginia. He was on a road trip. He was on a road trip to uh, New Jersey, and he picked up some more Polish beers. And this is from a brewery that started in the 1800s. It's owned by Van Parr today, the fourth, one of the four big Polish breweries. It's the largest independent Polish brewery. It says, excellent taste of beer, perfect balance of flavor, 11.2 ounces. Now, the website claims they only sell it in 500 milliliter bottles, but... 330 milliliters brewed with selected ingredients well of course all beers are brewed with selected ingredients because they select the ingredients and then they brew it but anyway imported by JMA import and export of Miami Florida uh, 5% alcohol and a Castle Sand Brewery Water, Wind, and Courage. Okay. The brewery was Kostlin Brewery until 1945. Uh, it was in Germany that the border changed in 1945. It had always been a uh, Prussian, Prussian brewery. Nice pop. Kostlin Brewery. Smoke Green Bottle. Thank you, Douglas, for this. Now, I don't know... Oh, nice smoke. I don't know when... Brock hit the market. They didn't really say on the website. Just talked about they have six breweries and they didn't have a website section for the Kostlin Kostlin Brewery. Only the other five, so that's kind of peculiar. But anyway, now Van Purr is only. Um, like 34 years old, that company. A lot of their stuff was purchased from Royal, I think it's called Royal Interbrew of Denmark, and they bought the Polish beers. They still have a collaboration. Okay, so thick white head, it's cloudy today, that's why I'm just not sitting outside, there's not much to see out there, but clouds and dreary weather. It's warm though, humid. Um, yeah, I see some little fine sediment in this golden beer. Let's go with that. Let's see. Uh, beer Advocate says it's good. 81 out of 100. Untapped saying it's good. Rape Beer is saying it. Uh, no, no. It's uh, like a 15 out of 100. 33 in the style. So they hate the style. Euro Lager. And they say it's a 15. It's terrible. It's undrinkable. It's horrible. It's tremendously bad. And you should never buy it. But other, the two other sites disagree. And I'm going to watch the video review. Okay, so it looks nice. That's an A on the appearance. Mm, it smells like crackery, biscuity, barley malt. I don't see why that would be bad, undrinkable, horrible, disgusting, or filthy, or terrible, or just sickening. It just smells nice to me. So, hmm, strange right here. Rape beer, what is up with rape beer? Okay, let's go with the taste. Typical Polish Euro lager, Polish beers. They're usually not as clean as German and Czech beers. They kind of sometimes have like a little dirty back taste, off taste. I don't know why, maybe it's something to do with The ingredients, probably more like the equipment may not be as clean. I'm just saying, um, I don't know. It's just something about it. It's just not quite as good. Now, if you get Brorari Fortuna, you don't pick that up, really. But, but those are so strong, 13, 14, 15% alcohol beers at the low end, 10%, maybe 9%. They just just do powerful ales and some uh, lagers like Baltic porters. So those will hide like maybe some unpleasantness. These don't. These 
kind of loggers are not going to do that. These loggers are not going to hide much of anything. So if there's a fault, it's going to show. A little metallic, medium bodied, dry, crisp finish, you know, mostly crisp. Uh, sweetness level, mm -hmm. two and a half out of five sugar cubes, so moderate sweetness, bitterness. One and a half out of five hop cones, so the bitterness is very low. And here's the ingredients. Uh, no, not the ingredients. They don't list it. But I think, I think, it's probably water, barley malt, hops, yeast, and hop extract, probably. The green bottle, kind of a lime green with the light shining through it, not an olive green. 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 Um... But with the beer in it, it gives it more of a lime color, you know, but the, but the bottle itself is, I mean, more of an olive color. The bottle itself is more lime green. All right, but anyway, any, hang on. I don't think it has rice or corn adjunct. It doesn't taste like it. But um, last taste and then the final assessment. Still has a little bit of those things I've described as negative qualities, but uh, overall it's nice. Nice. Uh, I'll go with Beer Advocate. They're saying 81 good. I'm saying 81 marginally good, B minus. So it's a marginally good beer. Uh, I wasn't totally thrilled with some of those other Unib Royal, Royal Danish Royal Unibrew beers. They kind of had that same kind of weird. Maybe not so clean equipment taste. I don't know <clears throat> what it is. Maybe something I'm missing. I doubt it. I'd like to try some of the really powerful ones, though. But I guess in New Jersey, you only get like 5% or 4.5% or stuff like that. It's the same with all these Euros. You know, we can't get the uh, Carlsberg 10.5% super strong. We can't get those um, Dutch 12 to 20 percenters and I don't know why because there's no law against it in Louisiana we they could sell a 20 percent euro beer easily they used to sell some real atrocities like uh, I'm trying to get this cat back on what was the uh, one from Romania super brew 15 15 percent alcohol lager it was undrinkable really it's amazingly bad from Bucharest. There we go. Got it. Uh, oh, it was memorable in a bad way. Uh, I couldn't finish that 500 milliliter bottle. I tried to, but wow. And then they had the bam and the boom from Czech Republic, from Prague in the Czech Republic. It was like bam with an exclamation mark. Boom. And uh, uh, those things were so illicit. You know what I'm saying? Like they were both at 15% and uh, couldn't make it. I tried, you know, I could, I could drink most of them, but oh, the chalk, oh, yo. But I, they're kind of fun to drink because they're so so challenging and um, interesting. So I, I would like to get the Tenant Strong from Merry Old Scotland. <laughs> I would like to get um, the Carlsberg Special Brew at, you know, the 10.5% version, the the, the lion, uh, no, I'm sorry, the uh, elephant, <laughs> lion, the elephant, 10.5. Um, yeah, I'd like to try those. For good or ill, I mean, if they're bad, I'll just say they're bad, you know. And, and then those Dutch beers. And the Hecht can, the Crafted Cannon, Crafted Cannon from Grolsch. It's a Grolsch beer. It's called Grolsch Crafted Cannon. It's 11%. We did get the, I mean, you can get the Austrian uh, Doppelbox, 14%. Uh, Santa Claus, yes. Same size bottle here. But you feel like somebody uh, drugged, you've been, you've been drugged, you know, if you drink. Um, and what was that? Uh, KB. K K K 
KAB something action bar rye. Uh, you know that one is from uh, Bavaria. It's in the brown bottle. It's 11%. Can't remember, but it, they they got rid of it at Total Wine and More. Check that at um, Martin Fine Wine and Spirits. I mean, there's only so much I could buy, but uh, 11%. Yeah, that was a powerful one. Oh, well, enough reminiscing. Uh, I know that Poland probably has some super dupas. I mean, they got the craft ones. I'm not talking about that, like the the Fortuna. I mean, those are tremendous. I'm just talking about, you know, bad ones. You know what I mean? Like the ones that people look down on. Like, oh, no, Super Brew 15, only the bums drink that. That's what I want to try. Okay, so uh, I have very low standards. Okay, but anyway, but in, in an erudite manner. So, B minus, uh, marginally good. I'm glad I got to try it. What the heck? So, thank you, Douglas. And I'm going to say laissez les bon temps relay. Y'all go to Poland and visit the, if they get tours, at the Koslen Brewery.